In this lesson, we are going to problem solve with linear inequalities. Uh, the beautiful thing about linear inequalities is they represent many, many possible combinations of answers. And that's useful for a number of practical examples. So let's read number one. We're going to take a more uh, natural approach to this question. So example number one reads as this. A sports store has a net revenue of $100 on every pair of downhill skis sold and $200 on every snowboard sold. The manager's goal is to have a net revenue of more than $1,000 a day from the sales of these two items. So uh, part A says on the graph to the right, put a circle on combinations that represent exactly $1,000 of revenue. So if we would like $1,000 of revenue, there are tons of combinations and that's what graphing linear inequalities is useful for. Tons of combinations that would represent exactly $1,000 in revenue. So one way to get exactly $1,000 of revenue is if they make $100 on every pair of skis, uh, if they sold exactly 10 pairs of skis and no snowboards. That would be 10 skis and no snowboards. That's exactly $1,000. Another possibility is to sell, if they make $200 on every snowboard, they could sell exactly five snowboards that's that circle there. Uh, five snowboards and no skis. There are, again, lots of possibilities. Another possibility is what if they saw, sold four pairs of skis, which would be $400. Then they'd only need to sell three uh, snowboards because that would be $600 more. So four skis, which is right here, and three snowboards. That would add up, so that's that point right there, that would add up to $1,000 in revenue. Uh, another possibility, what if they sold two pairs of skis? That would be $200, and four snowboards. That would be $800, which would combine to be $1,000. Or what if they sold six pairs of skis and two snowboards? That would be $600 plus $400, that's 1000 Or what if they sold eight pairs of skis and one snowboard? So those are all possibilities, and what you'll notice, and this is not actually uh, <clears throat> just chance, you'll notice that those fall within a line. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, it says put a check mark on combinations that represent more than $1,000 of revenue. Well, to make more than $1,000 of revenue, if I'm going to be sarcastic, uh, this would definitely be more than $1,000, this check mark here, 10 skis and 10 snowboards. Uh, another possibility that would be more than $1,000, 9 skis and 10 snowboards, or 8 skis, or sorry, yeah, eight skis and 10 snowboards. In fact, all of these points would be more than $1,000. Uh, you'll also notice, I'll do just another example. Let's look here. Uh, this would be, let's just say we sold six keys, six skis and six snowboards, which would be this point right here. That would be $600 on skis, $1,200 on snowboards. That's $1,800. That's also more than $1,000. Uh, here's another possible combination four pairs of skis <clears throat> and five snowboards. That would be $400 plus $1,000. Uh, that would be a total of $1,400. In fact, what you'll find and what you'll probably notice right here as we're doing this, and this again isn't chance, that all the points that are above the $1,000 boundary line, these represent all the possible combinations of skis and snowboards that they could sell if they want to make more than $1,000. Okay. Uh, finally, this next question, or the last question, uh, states, <clears throat> put an X on combinations that represent less than $1,000 of revenue. So here's an example. If I sold nothing, that's where this X is here. If I sold no ski skis and no snowboards, that would be less than $1,000. Or here's another example. If I sold six skis, this X right here, six skis and one snowboard, that would be $600 plus $200 for the snowboard, that would be $800. That's less than $1,000. Or if I sold uh, here, four snowboards and no skis, that would be $800. Or four snowboards and one pair of skis, that would be $900. Uh, what you'll find out is all of these combinations that are below the $1,000 boundary line represent combinations that are not $1,000. <clears> so there we go. Uh, that's what our graph looks like. Now, why would I not have any indications in these three quadrants? And that's because they all have negative. So this is a negative number of skis which is impossible to sell. This has negative skis 
and snowboards, which is also impossible to sell. Uh, and this has negative snowboards, which is also impossible. So when we look at the next question, which says, what are the restrictions on the variables and how do you know? Uh, the restrictions are that we can only have positive integers. You can't sell half of a ski. Uh, so positive integers. Another way you could write that, those are called whole numbers. And what you would see probably in a mathematical textbook is you would see that skis, which I've represented by the letter K, belong to whole numbers, and snowboards, which are represented by the letter N, belong to whole numbers. So any of those answers are good. And C, write a linear inequality to represent the situation. The actual situation here is that the skis, so $100 for every pair of skis, which is K, plus $200 for every snowboard, which is N, has to be greater than or equal to or not or equal to, just greater than. It says here the manager's goal is to have a net revenue of more than $1,000. So that revenue has to be greater than $1,000. Okay? <clears throat> uh, and we will look at the next example in the next lesson.